Hello again, Grace and friends. It's Ms. Werman, and I'm here with another story time story. This one is from an author I think you probably know, but I don't know if you know this story. It's called McGillagot's Pool by Dr. Seuss. Young man, laughed the farmer, you're sort of a fool. You'll never catch fish in McGillagot's Pool. The pool is too small, and you might as well know it. When people have junk, here's the place that they throw it. You might catch a boot, or you might catch a can. You might catch a bottle. But listen, young man, if you sat 50 years with your worms and your wishes, you'd grow a long beard before you'd catch fishes. Delegat's pool is full of a lot of garbage, that's sad. Hmm, answered Marco. It may be you're right. I've been here three hours without one single bite. There might be no fish. But again, well, there might. Because you never can tell what goes on down below. This pool might be bigger than you or I know. This might be a pool like I've read of in books, connected to one of those underground brooks, an underground river that starts here and flows right under the pasture. And then, well, who knows? It might go along where no one can see, right under State Highway 203, right under the wagons, right under the toes of Mrs. Umbroso, who's hanging out clothes. It might keep on flowing. Perhaps, who can tell? Right under the people in Sneedon's Hotel, right under the grass where they're playing croquet, then under the mountains and far, far away. See the guy playing croquet back here? This might be a river. Now, mightn't it be? connecting McGillagot's pool with the sea. Then maybe some fish might be swimming toward me. If such a thing could be, they certainly would be. The sign before said 37 miles to the ocean, so that is a really long underground river. Some very smart fellow might point out the way to the place where I'm fishing. And that's why I say, if I wait long enough, if I'm patient and cool, who knows what I'll catch in McGillagot's pool. I might catch a thin fish. I might catch a stout fish. I might catch a short or a long, long drawn out fish. Any kind, any shape, any color or size. I might catch some fish that would open your eyes. Doesn't that sound like when he says, I might catch a thin fish, I might catch a stout fish, I might catch a short or a long, long drawn out fish. I can't help but think of red fish, blue fish, one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. I love that. I won't be surprised if a dogfish appears complete with a collar and long floppy ears woofing along. And perhaps he might chase a whole lot of catfish right straight to this place. Now there are dogfish and catfish, but that is not what they look like. I might catch a fish with a pinwheel-like tail. I might catch a fish who has fins like a sail. I might catch some young fish, some high jumping friskers. I might catch an old one with long flowing whiskers. I might catch a fish with a long curly nose. I might catch a fish like a rooster that crows. I might catch a fish with a checkerboard belly, or even a fish made of strawberry jelly. Let's see them a little closer. That's the curly nosed one. Look at the checkerboard belly. Those are the frisky ones I think he was talking about. And the sail, oh, that is a fancy pinwheel tail, isn't it? I might catch a seahorse. Now, mightn't I now? 
I might catch a fish who is partly a cow. Some fish from the tropics, all sunburned and hot, might decide to swim up. Well, they might, might they not? Racing up north for a chance to get cool, full steam ahead for McGilligot's pool. And the sign says McGilligot's pool, 1,523 miles. That would be a very long swim. I might catch an eel. Well, I might, it depends. A long twisting eel with a lot of strange bends and oddly enough, with a head on both ends. One doesn't catch this kind of fish as a rule, but the chances are fine in McGillicott's pool. That is strange, a head on each end. Who wants to catch small ones like mackerel or trout? Say, I'll catch a sawfish with a, such a long snout that he needs an assistant to help him about. If I wait long enough, if I'm patient and cool, who knows what I'll catch in McGillicott's pool. Look at his little assistant helping him carry around the sawfish nose. Excuse me, I think snout is the word he used. Some roughneck old lobster, all gristle and muscle, might grab at my bait, then I'd have a tussle. To land one so tough might take two or three hours, but the next might be easy. The kind that likes flowers. That is a very fancy fish. Her fins remind me of Gertrude McFuzz, remember with all the fancy feathers that curl around like that? I might catch some sort of a fast moving bloke who zips through the waves with an overarm stroke. I might, and I may, and that's really no joke. A fish even faster, a fish, if you please, who slides down the sides of strange islands on skis. He might ski on over and pay me a visit. That's not impossible, really, now is it? Look at those little fish skis, that's so funny. Some circus fish. Fish from an acrobat school might stage a big show at McGillicott's pool. Those are fancy fish. Or I might catch a fish from some stranger place yet, from the world's highest river in far off Tibet, where the falls are so steep that it's dangerous to ride them. So the fish put up chutes and they float down beside them. He means parachutes. It's a short way of saying parachutes. See them? I don't know if the highest river in the world is in Tibet, but you know what? I'll find out in time for the video and I'll put it in the video so we know the answer. From the world's deepest ocean, from way down below, from down in the mud where the deep divers go, from down in the mire and the muck and the murk, I might catch some fish who are all going glurk. That is a long parade of fish. And a diver who is very surprised to see them, it looks like. Whales, I'll catch whales. Yes, a whole herd of whales, all spouting their spouts and all thrashing their tails. I'll catch 50 whales, then I'll stop for the day because there's nothing that's bigger than whales, so they say. They are very big. And you see they're following the signs. It says this, this way to, this way to McGillicott's pool. I do have a quibble with Dr. Seuss here because I think a bunch of whales is not called a herd, it's called a pod. And whales aren't really fish, but you can catch them if with a fishing pole, I suppose, if you have a really big one. There is something bigger, some sort of a kind of a thingamajigger, a fish that's so big, if you know what I mean, that he makes a whale look like a tiny sardine. That is a whale right there. And that is the thingamajigger. Huge fish. 
Oh, the sea is so full of a number of fish. If a fellow is patient, he might get his wish. All are there. And that one fish is pointing them to the hook that goes back to Miguel Agat's pool. And that's why I think that I'm not such a fool when I sit here and fish in Miguel Agat's pool. The end. I love Dr. Seuss, he is so funny and I really like his rhymes because they're silly and sometimes he makes up words so that they rhyme just right. I hope you liked this story. Um, one thing you have to think about from Miguel Agat's pool, sometimes things that look like little tiny things or not very interesting things or not very exciting things are really, really fascinating and detailed and exciting if you just pay attention to them very carefully. And like this little boy says, you also sometimes have to be very patient to be able to realize how cool something really is. So that is our story for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I love reading stories to you. It's one of my favorite things to do. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.